how do you promote yourself? And how do you curate that promotion, right? How do you do that? How do you make sure that the eyeballs that are seeing you are seeing you in the light that you want to be seen in and seeing the work that you want them to see, right? You're the curator of that experience. And there is going to be that experience regardless, right? Because that's the living, that's the age we live in, the digital age, okay? So being said that we've talked a little bit about that, let me go back to this presentation now and give you a little conversation about if we talk about what the traditional landscape looks like, we're talking about back in the day of when we had the prime time networks, right? We had NBC and ABC and CBS, right? We didn't have FX and FXX and, you know, I mean, it didn't go into, you know, you know, exponential versions of it. We didn't have different platforms. We then got into cable. We got Showtime. We got HBO. And that was really a big deal, right? Those were the platforms. That was the traditional landscape of, of them. Now, I want you to see how many channels we can watch. I don't know if I can throw, I can't really throw this slide. But just to give you a sense of how many channels we can watch and how many shows that and where we can watch them. We've got lots and lots and lots of choices. So the landscape now is that the business is expanded, right? The landscape is that there's a new audience development and there's new content. And, um, and this is what we're looking at now. How many of these platforms do you recognize? A lot of them, right? How many of you watch series on Right? Or on how many on the Amazon? I've watched series on Amazon now. Right? Um, look at this little article that we have here about Verizon. Somebody read to me the, the header. Can somebody read that header? And Verizon goes over the top. Verizon. Verizon, isn't that the company that provides me with my cell phone service? Like, don't they send me a bill? Don't they just charge me for my cell phone? What are they doing? Creating a platform and creating a place for content to live and creating original content. And why? Why are they getting in the game, right? So you have to look at the fact that now we've got all this merging of eyeball and and production and content in places that we've never looked before, we've never thought about before. Verizon goes with Awesomeness TV. What Awesomeness TV was a multi-channel, you know, came from the multi-channel network platform, and they were bought out by DreamWorks. So it's like the big, you know, big whale in the, in the sea coming along and swallowing this fish, and then he comes along and swallows this fish, and he's just gonna keep swallowing the fish until, it, you know, Networks want to be, the bigger people like the DreamWorks, they want a piece of this because this is where the young eyeballs, this is where our generation is spending their time and spending their focus. And if that's where I'm going to be all day long, then why not develop content for it? Why not the, develop original series, scripted series, right, for me to watch? Okay. Um, and some of the shows that um, are on these, on Veronica, El Rey has a show, Dust Till Dawn. Hulu has Workaholics in Broad City. Netflix did Bloodline and House of Cards. Amazon Prime, Mozart in the Jungle, Bosch, The Man in High Castle. FXX is comedy. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Pivot had uh, Joseph Ford Levitt. Fortitude with Janice Quay. Awesomeness had Richie Rich. So, these are names that we recognize, that we know. These are actors and, and stars and people you know, that are coming to these, these digital platforms. I, I think there's also an interesting conversation. This is another set of articles. I didn't make copies of them. But what do you think are the trends that we see in the media? You know, FX Chiefs John Lankrax warned that TV has a content bubble. And he was a big thing. He's like, it's going to break. It's going to break. There's just too much content. And, you know, She's gonna blow, right? Nobody wants this. 
Um, but the truth is, Ted, uh, Ted Netflix came back with a rebuttal saying, you know what, no, there is no such thing as too much TV. And what really, what the answer to all of this is, and that the conversation that went back and forth between those two heads of studios was that they basically said, there is no, no such thing as too much content. What people will wind up doing is they will want to curate that content. They'll want somebody to start curating that for them and figuring out where they should put their idols and handing it to them in those packages. And being able to buy those packages that they're only interested in and not have to sit there. How many of you have cable television with 575 or 780 or 800 whatever channels, right? How many of those do you actually watch? Maybe, right? Okay, so what they're saying is, we're gonna get rid of that for you. We're gonna curate your experience. And we're gonna aggregate the shows that you wanna watch and you're only gonna get, you don't have to buy what you wanna watch. So the audience is becoming, this all this content is becoming audience driven, content driven, and now other studios, places like Pilgrim Studios, which has never gone into scripted, is now opening a digital arm to do six original series. Verizon, right? We just read, going into 200 hours of original programming. So, these are some of the um, series, and uh, actually the movies that have been developed from YouTube stars. Do any of you recognize any of these movies? Tiny Furniture. Tiny Furniture, okay, perfect. Does anybody recognize anything else? Bad Night or? Any of that? Yes, no? Okay, Bad Night had two YouTube stars in it. One, one was Lauren, uh, her last name is Luffringshausen. She was a beauty blogger. Jen McAllister was a storyteller and the two of them put on, a, made a movie and um, they mounted it. They were two YouTube stars and they were aggregated together. And then around them, the producers put other actors no from Television series and, and with you know with, with bigger credits. Um, and why are these actors that are starting out in YouTube, or why are they why are they getting play? Exactly, because they have found a way to enter into your life on a platform that they've created, and they've got your eyeballs and they've got your views, and you are feeding this. And as soon as the audience comes, what comes next? Money. Advertisers. That's right. And what does advertisers symbolize? Money. Money. That's right. So everybody's sitting here now going, well, I don't really understand what this has to do with me. Um, why is this significant to actors? Okay, because subscription video on demand, which is what we're talking about, where you're going to be able to get what you want, when you want, how you want. Where, you, where the world's going to go to pick and pay for what they want. Why is this significant to actors? Well, let's take a look at what some of these studios are doing. Does anybody know about Major Studio or Awesomeness TV or Machinima? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. So Awesomeness TV of 86,000 channels. Okay. They have 37 million subscribers. Okay, 3.3 billion total views. It's a lot, a lot of audience and a lot of plat, but a lot of uh, money, a lot of money, basically in there. So I'm an actor, and I'm coming out into this world, and I don't know what awesomeness TV is. That's a problem. I need to know about who they are, and I need to know what kind of content they're creating, and I need to know who, uh, who's working on that content, who's writing for them, who's producing for them, what kind of shows that, they're, they're, um, that live on that platform. So how do we negotiate that? This is what we need to do. We need to get up every morning and we need to open up a tablet or whatever you read your news on. How many of you actually still get a newspaper? One person. Did, any you, did anybody under 20 know what a newspaper is? 
Um, how do you read your news in the morning? Where do you get your world information? Where does it come from? Instagram. Internet, phone, Instagram. Okay. Does anybody aggregate their um, their information on um, the business itself? In other words, do you have like Feedly or one of these things where you're going to load in all your trades or anything like that? Anybody here do that? Okay. As an actor, you need to have that information. You need to put on your tablet, phone, wherever you read your news and get up in the morning and your job is to know what's going on in your industry through Deadline, through The Wrap, through IndieWire, through Hollywood Reporter, Variety, right? International news, the business of filmdaily.com, specifics for actors, casting about, daily actor, actors access. Some of these things you know. Some of these things you may not have thought about. But it's a large conversation, and you're entering into a very large landscape. Um, the place where I aggregate for for, for me, is Feedly, but there's also Hootsuite, Actors Access, Breakdowns, Casting About, and your online presence, using, that, using social media to reach out to those creating content. And we're going to talk a little bit about how your online presence and how to create that. Um, search engine optimization. Has anybody ever heard that term, SEO? Yeah? Okay. If you want to learn more about SEO, I would suggest you look up some of these resources and read about it. Because SEO as an actor is incredibly important to you. That means how do I find you? What happens when I Google your name? And what comes up? What do I know? So write that down and we'll go over that. Okay. I will put back up the, the contact in a minute. But what I would like to do now is I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your social media obligations and your marketing opportunities, okay? So you know all these platforms exist. You know this is a big, wide landscape. You know a lot of eyeballs are on a lot of different platforms. And you're thinking, well, what am I supposed to do about that? Besides educate yourself and know who's writing, who's directing, and whose work you're admiring through all of these different platforms, you also have an obligation as an actor to put your own content out there for people to see. And where that lives and how that lives goes back to that conversation that we talked about, about curating your product, curating what you do. You are in control of how people see you. You're in control of what they see about you. So your job is to make sure that you're a very careful curator of that information. Um, I'm just going to do a little exercise here, assuming that I'm still on. Okay. I am friends with an actor who lives in New York. He's a third year film television student at a very good university in New York. I'm Googling his name. He wants to be an actor in this profession. His name is Dasmond Still. So I Googled him because I'm a casting director and I want to know more about him. He does not have a website. How many of you own your own domains and have your own websites? F minus people. <laughs> you better, if you believe in yourself and you think that you're going to be a successful actor, you need to own your own name and you need to own your own domain. And you need to create your content and post it and put it in that area. That's the first place that your content should live, is on your own website that you've you know, curated, that you've created to represent yourself as a professional and as an artist. So number one, you got to have a website. And it's got to be your name or as close to your name as you can get. Hopefully, somebody hasn't bought your name by now. So I'd say after this session, everybody better go out right now and buy their name. <laughs>
um, before somebody else wants to charge you, you know, $50,000 to get it back. Um, so number one, Desmond doesn't have, doesn't own his name, okay? So I'm Googling him because I want to know more about him. So first thing I see is Susan Stills, women's right activist. She's a, she escaped decade-long abuse under her former husband. Uh, no, that's not the guy I know. And then we have all this stuff about damage and children and Susan and abuse and abuse. And now we get into Caitlyn and Bruce Jenner. And now we're going on and on. Nope, bitch, I'm still here. I don't know what is on here that would give me any idea who he is. Okay. All right. So I guess there's nothing to see about him there. So I'm going to go to images because now I just maybe I'm going to see what he looks like. Hmm. Guess he looks like SpongeBob. Hmm. Or maybe Squidward. Okay. Or maybe this guy in a bat mask. I have no idea what he looks like. Is he one of those two guys? I don't know. Is he this couple? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm done. I give up. Do you get the picture? That's called SEO. That's search engine optimization. This actor, who's working really hard in a really good program, to become a successful actor has absolutely no way for me to access and find out who he is. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know what he's done. I don't know any video on him. I have no information on him. So as actors, your responsibility is to make sure that your footprint out there is something that you curate and you give us access to. That's the beginning of your responsibility. Then your second part of the responsibility is to get wise about the landscape that's out there and try and figure out from learning about that landscape and watching YouTube and learning about where some of these stars are emerging and who's directing their videos, who you might be interested in working with or looking at, and somehow connecting yourself, following, you know, um, commenting, liking, so that you have a way to be part of that conversation and to get into that, into that world because that's the world that actors are entering into now. It's not the world anymore where we go, hi, it's so nice to meet you. I just finished acting school and I'm an amazing actor. Just put me in anything. I can just do it all. We need to, we need to know more now specifically than we've ever needed to know. So when you curate this and when we talk about brand, which is a kind of a, a dirty word for an actor, you know? It's like, how could you reduce me into a brand? Um, you know, I'm so much more than that. I could do so many things. I could play everything, you know, from a, you know, 50-year-old man to a 4-year-old child if I needed to. But the truth is, that's not what you're going to get hired for, and that's not how people are going to find you and try and use you. So you need to curate what you really believe is your best image or your best brand forward. And as people get to know you, and as you do get more opportunity, and as you put more things on your platform and you curate my experience, I will learn more about you. But to start off with, you have to know where that beginning of that brand starts and how to make that you know, um, accessible to a casting director. Um, I don't know if I have a whole lot more to say like that's mic or presentation worthy. I think, um, I do think that the other part of this conversation that just goes along hand in hand, obviously, as an actor, is that in order to create content, what do you have to be able to do? Access, but what, what, how do you create content? The excess video, right. And how are you going to video things? Tripods, or how else are most things done now? iPhones. iPhones. And how are most auditions submitted? Through what? Self Who said self-tape? Self-tape. That's right. So the other, op the other thing that an actor absolutely needs to become proficient in 
is knowing how to self-tape. And that includes how am I lit? How is the sound? What's my background? You know, all the, all the components that make this, you know, am I, am I active in the space? How much can I, you know, how much can I make, uh, how much production value do I want to create? What do I want to curate? If I'm not going to sit in a room with you, if I don't get a one-on-one -on -one audition with you, and the first hit to a casting director is going to be through a self-tape, right? It's going to get uploaded and clicked on and looked at for about 20 seconds, right? What did it say a goldfish's uh, attention span was? Was eight? Okay, so you've got, if, if, if that's a goldfish, a casting director, I can tell you, is probably half of that because they're wildly busy and they have a million submissions, right? And you are now in the position of sending them a piece of tape that you want them to sit and appreciate your work. You better be well lit. You better be on point. You better be memorized. You better know what you're doing, have a sense of time and place and intention and know that material and be off book. And you have to curate and pre present a piece of material for them that they can look at you and say, okay, I get it. Yes. That's what your goal is. So being proficient at self-taping is hugely important, too. It's another part of this digital experience that we have to just navigate at this point. So many um, actors are called in from self-tape or, or a session doesn't even go to the next step, to a callback session, until a series of self-tapes are watched and looked at. So an important, important component. Um, I, don't know if I've, I don't know if I've given you too much or a little or just a, a big, huge overview of a lot of different conversations, but I think what my main objective here today is to tell you that this business, this landscape, is something that if you don't get out in front of it, and if you don't get wise to it, and load it onto your iPads and read about the business and go out there and search around and look at what content's being made and get smart about how to put your own image out there and your own brand out there and your own content out there, you're really not in the game. Um, you can certainly, if you want to just be a regional theater actor, and I have nothing, no problem with that, I, that'd be awesome, but I don't ultimately think that's going to pay all the bills. So at some point, you're going to have to enter into this digital marketplace in some way, shape, or form. And when you do, it's up to you how strongly and how much of a point of view you want to put towards that. So that's all I'm going to say in terms of just talking at you. And now I would like to hear from you with questions and comments about some of the stuff I talked about. Yeah. I think if you are aggregating all these places on w in one feed and you can click to each one on, uh, and get your entertainment news, what you, your real responsibility is is to stay, stay uh, current with the landscape. That's the, that's the main objective. Oh, that they're making four films over here. They're launching two new TV projects over there. They're accepting unsolicited scripts over here. They just up the writing. Uh, they just up the quota of... Uh, you know, new, new writers that they're going to take on this here. You know, as you can watch that business grow, you can watch and see where opportunity exists for you. You know, maybe you, maybe you write on the side. You know, um, maybe you've written something and you have an opportunity to submit something that's original and your writing is accepted or somebody digs what you wrote. How many television shows now... I can't even think, actually, of a television show where the writer is not also a producer on the show. True? I mean, it's, that's, the, that's, that's what happens now. They own their shows. They produce their shows. They sometimes even star in their shows. Um, my crazy ex-girlfriend started as a YouTube. You know? So that's where these things seed, that's where these seeds grow. So 
it's really more just about making sure you take the responsibility to look out into this big world and figure out what interests you and what you want to follow and what you think is important for you. Not all of it's going to be meaningful. You know, you don't have, it, it, a lot of it's going to be noise, but some of it's going to be meaningful for you. And you're going to find what that is and you're going to stay connected to that. Yeah, Jamie. So a couple of things, you know, w w with um, yeah, all the information, so what, what uh, James was, was sort of hitting on is that, you know, I get the Hollywood Reporter and I read the Hollywood Reporter. And it's, you know, for me specifically, I'll look at what projects are happening now. And say you get information. I mean, to me, it's part of it. It's being bombarded with information. Mm -hmm. And how do I, you know, really focus my attention on what is right for me, the actor? Mm -hmm. And then, so I find out these four projects are shooting in San Francisco mm -hmm. with these four casting directors. What, th what th one of the problems that I see happening is, well, what's the gap? I have an agent, so I I'm not necessarily in that. But I find myself still in that boat. But how do I get then from, oh, these, I you know, identifying these projects to then knowing how to get in touch with these casting people and getting myself seen. Well, I think that I think the conversation is is that if you're identifying then you're a you're a partner to your representation. I mean, uh, that, like I, we were speaking about before, the myth of like I have an agent, I can just sit back and they're going to call me and they're going to get a hold of me when I when the work comes along. You have to be in an active partnership with your agents and with your representation. It's just as much incumbent upon you to be looking and pushing and finding content and getting um, information about projects that you're interested in, writers that you think are incredible, producers that have put some, you know, that have produced shows or, um, you know, certain places where certain kind of content's being developed that you're very intrigued by. Like me personally, I'm obsessed with AMC right now. Everything on it, I want to watch. You know, I can't get, I can't TiVo enough. You know, <laughs> my, I'm, my DVR is full with you know AMC shows. I love their shows. So I I would I'd be very interested to see the the writers, the people they're producing for AMC, who's uh, who's overseeing the casting process, if there is somebody overseeing the casting process at AMC. You know, I, w I would want to know as much about that as I can and have a point of view about it. That's my kind of show. That's the world that I think I live in. And it's a partnership with your agent. That's what I know. If, I, if you get me into this world, that's the world that I'm going to score in. But it really starts from your point of view, you know, um, and your ability to articulate what you want to go after or what you know is your wheelhouse. And what do you tell an actor who doesn't have an agent? I tell an actor who doesn't have an agent that the most important thing is you've got to, you got to get you, first of all, you got to create content, okay? You have to have something on yourself. You have to have video or something or a piece of film that somebody can watch. And the next step would be you would put it up on Actors Access, right? Because that's the first thing you can do. And when you do put it up on Actors Access, I was uh, told this story earlier, but one of the actors in the earlier session today says he has his whole demo reel up on Actors Access. And I said, that's great. What is it called? And he said, it's labeled Demonstration. And I thought, why would you label it Demonstration? What, what piece of him thinks that as a casting director, I'm compelled to click on something that says Demonstration? What would you suggest? I would suggest that each piece of that video that you have, each piece of that demo reel that you have, you're probably playing maybe four or five different characters, correct? I mean, that's why it is. It's a demo reel. It's like, it's like a, here's, a, here's a compilation of some of my work. I would separate out the videos, and I would label them, you know, uh, you know, wildly constipated man. You know, I mean, I don't know, whatever this one video that you did, you know, if that's what you played. Um, you know, um, you know, the boyfriend who's throwing the, you know, this is the big fight, you know, one of those big fight scenes where he's like, you know, you cheated on me, get the fuck out, right? You know, uh, boyfriend, you know, boyfriend dumps his girlfriend, you know, boyfriend finally dumps his girlfriend or bo boyfriend finally dumps his cheating girlfriend, you know, I mean, you're marketers, you know, think about the way to market what would make me compelled to want to click on a piece of video? 
I'm looking for a guy who is playing a tough guy, let's say. Let's say I'm looking for, uh, like, let's say I'm looking for somebody from Breaking Bad, in Breaking Bad world, okay? And I want, uh, I want a real kind of, I want an ethnic guy. I want him to be, you know, Hispanic, Puerto Rican. I want him to be gritty. I want him to be tough, right? And um, I see a picture of this guy on Actors Access, and he has just this thing listed, dramatic reel. Well, that's not going to get me. But if it says drug deal gone bad, I'm like, this guy looks like this. Drug deal gone bad. That's the world I'm casting for. I'm going to click. So, yes, there's a space for your demo reel to live as in, in its entirety. That can go on your website. But as you market yourself, you should pull components of that out. The other thing that actors do that is wildly counterintuitive is they'll create a demo reel, and it'll start. And for the first 10 seconds of it, 15 seconds of it, sometimes, A, we don't know who we're looking at. Okay, there's a scene, and there's two people, and they're two guys, and they both have dark hair, and I don't know who he is. Okay, I'm done, right? That's a, that's a sh that shoots you in the foot. Here's another thing. I'm an actor, and I have all these really great little moments from this piece of film and that piece of film where I go, what? Huh? Aw. And they put all those up front to start off with. It's like an introduction. It's like, let me show you, let me show you how I'm going to do five or ten different expressions in a row. I don't need to see that. I'm clicking to see your work. Show me your work. And get to the meat of your work immediately. Okay? Don't start a scene where, you're, where the person who's in the scene with you, and don't start your film, I should say, or your reel, on something where the other person is going on and on and on and on and on, and then finally, 10 seconds later, you say, blah. That's completely counterintuitive, because I've watched 10 seconds of a video, and I haven't heard about you yet. And you've wasted 10 seconds of my valuable time. Think of me as that goldfish, OK? Think of me as somebody that's going to look at you for that long. So when you open up with your material, Make it impactful. Make it obvious of who I'm looking at and why I'm looking at them. Okay? I'm going to show you just an example of something. And this is what you can create all on your own. You don't need, um, you really don't need anything other than a camera or a friend to come help you put this together. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so basically, basically what I'm showing you this for is this piece of film is completely centric to this actor. There's no question who I'm watching. There's no question who's, my who's supposed to be getting my attention, right? Um, this is a, th these, uh, these video files are crappy to try and share with you because they, they're living in, the, in, a, in a space, in an unfinished space because they had just been finished, but, and they haven't been fully sound mixed and edited yet. So, but, th but the point is, is that any of you could create something like this. You can light yourself, you can be miked, and you can create a scene where we know he's talking to another person, right? We see the script handing in, we hear the voice on the other side, but we don't see them and we don't need to see them because it's not about them. It's about him. And that's who we want to watch. And that's what we will watch if the material's compelling and that he's, you know, holding our attention. Um, I was saying to somebody the other day, there are so many times, and this happened in this last uh, day or so, one of the actors gave me a piece of material, and it was two scenes from a movie. The first scene from the movie was him and a young boy, and they were playing fake guns with each other, and the boy was shooting him, and he was shooting the boy, and then the boy shot him, and he pretended that he died, and he went, 
Jones that you know threw himself onto the floor, and then him and the boy are lying in the grass looking up at the sky, and they say a few words together, and we think, okay, that was appealing. What else? Second scene comes along, and he's talking over a car with another actor. Now I know who he is because I've seen him now very clearly in the first scene, so I don't have a problem identifying who he is. However, the scene over the car hood keeps cutting to the other actor, cutting to the other actor, cutting to the other <laughs> actor. And I finally looked at him and I said, I'm hiring him. I like him. So this actor now has given me a demo reel, right? He's, I've watched 30 seconds of one of his pieces. I've started to watch the beginning of his second piece, and he lost me because he didn't keep the eyeball. He didn't keep my eyeballs on him. He opened up a screen, turned the camera to the fellow actor, who is a really good actor, by the way. And by the way, so is this guy. But all of a sudden, it, it, it's, it, it shifted my attention. And the other actor in that particular scene had a little bit more compelling dialogue, a little bit more urgency. It was obviously being driven by hit the other actor's anger, and he was the reactor, which is not a good scene then for him to follow up as a second thing on a reel because he's got me right there. Now that he's got me, he has to make sure that the next thing he shows me is all about him. Otherwise, he's lost me. And he runs the risk, and I can't tell you how many times this happened in casting, how many times I said, find out who this other guy is in the scene with this guy. I really like him. It's like the worst thing that can happen to you when you send your demo <laughs> reel into a casting director is have them hire the other actor who's in the scene with you, who's not even up for the role. But all of a sudden they think both these guys are really good. Both of them are around the same age. He's a little more charactery, but he's a really forceful actor. This guy just receded into the background. He's really compelling. I didn't imagine the role that way, but you know what? It could be. I'll use him. Okay? So something to think about. Any other thoughts or questions? Is any of this kind of, is it making sense to you? Good, good. It is overwhelming. It is. I mean, I'm obviously older, and so uh, the technology, I feel like I'm not quite up with it. Up with speed, right. So all you can control is what you do as an actor, right? You have to look for material that suits you. You have to get that material and learn how to self-tape it. And then you have to get somebody younger than you <laughs> to upload it for you on your own website. And that's the beginning. But at the very least, that's your job. If you really seriously want people to, to look at you and you need to put yourself on Actors Access, and then some of those pieces of film you can label and put out there. You know, that's, that's what you can control. And I was saying this earlier to Damon, you only have what you can curate under your control. And then the rest of it's not in your control, right? And so the, the better you do a job of, of saying, this is exactly how I want you to see me, this is what I do best, this is what makes me really unique and why I'm better than that other person to hire for the job because look at me in this scene or look at what I do. That's what your job is. And then the rest is really about timing and longevity and staying power and fate and all the rest of those things that come into play. You know, staying power in this industry is nine-tenths of the law. You stay with it long enough and you do the right stuff and you keep yourself out there and you do good work and you keep it up updated and posted, things, things eventually will happen. And even if you don't have an agent, let me guarantee you that if a casting director stumbles upon you and they want to hire you for something, there will be an agent right on the heels <laughs> waiting to just take claim and say, I found them. <laughs> because if a casting director wants to hire you, somebody's going to want to represent you. So... You don't have to worry so much about representation. You have to worry about getting your, the eyeballs on your work. That's what you want. In any platform that you can figure out how to put it out there. But you got to put it out there. Right? Nobody knows you're amazing if nobody sees you.
Yeah. So that's how you start. Any other thoughts? Uh, where do you see these platforms, these kind of newer, smaller platforms uh, going in the next, you know, five years? Oh, my years? God. If I had a crystal ball, I, I, <laughs> I, I just seriously, I find that the industry has, um, you know, it's just telescoped to a point of um, there's so much diversity and there's so much content and it's, and it, there's, it's just a feast right now. You know, everybody's calling it the Wild West, you yeah. know. But in terms of like LA physically, like do you think a lot of them are just going to set up kind of studios or use the old studio facilities or, or is there going to start coming up in cities all over the country? Or I, I think that uh, content will be created absolutely everywhere and anywhere. I don't think there will, I don't think, I think the whole concept of brick and mortar in and of itself is a, is a, is a strange concept, you know. Yeah, I mean, when you think about the kind of products that can sell, um, I mean, think about like even something like Uber, right? There is no Uber headquarters. There is no Uber building. There is no Uber. It's, it. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, but I'm saying when it like, all right, then Uber's a bad example. But give me, give me, give me. They start these the. Right, and then they become, then they can become, but like there are, there are other companies that are not coming to mind right now that make a lot of money that have never invested in, you know, in the traditional brick and mortar, you know, walk into the building kind of um, ideology. And they've become huge. Everybody needs them. You know, everybody wants them. So... I think content is going to get, you know, people are shooting things I in their living rooms. They're shooting things in front of their computers. Uh, there's commercial, there's, you know, guys that are, uh, you know, skaters and, and, and that have, that go do action movies. And then they post something and then somebody likes their sense of action. Some commercial company sees them. And all of a sudden they're handed a feature or they're handed a, a, a you know, national commercial to shoot. I think people are pulling talent from everywhere and anywhere, and I think there are some people that are amazing at knowing how to platform themselves. Like, they make it their business to do that. And, um, in fact, one of the articles that I gave you, um, I think, talks about why A-lister film stars are turning to TV and SVOD. Yeah. And then they get to a level where they're internet famous or they're getting attention. What's the next place that they go after their bedroom basement is set up? They, their films are watched by enough viewers that, that executives at the networks, in the development departments, in the casting departments, casting directors, their mandate is to be aware of these up and comers. If you've got over a million views, people need to, you know, people know about you. And you can be guaranteed that even if you're somebody who only has, let's just say you only have 4,000 views, okay, on some silly thing that you created that for some reason people really liked, okay? Um, if it's between you and another actor and you have no views or no presence and they have 4,000, it might go to the other person that has the 4,000. Because those are 4,000 viewers that know about that person and nobody that knows about you. So you have nothing to lose by putting out the content that you want people to see that you're proud of or developing or writing or collaborating with other actors and creating things that will allow you to have a larger presence. Because when it comes down to it, that's what people are looking at. You know, they're talking about that. And don't be naive to think that casting departments aren't being given mandates to be aware of that. You know, it's important. It brings in automatic advertising, viewership, and money. It's all, you know, they're in the business of making money. <laughs> so if somebody's got a million followers, that means that advertisers are interested, and that means that that's, they're somebody that has some built-in cachet. So, 
I don't know if that completely answered your question, but <laughs> any other Wendy, thoughts? There's, oh, there's an online question. Yeah. If it's okay, uh, Samantha from Davis wants to know, would the same branding rules apply for writers and directors? A hundred percent. Um, in fact, I, you know, the writers uh, that are getting note and the directors that are getting note are people that are getting snatched out of those platforms and out of those YouTube spaces and into mainstream. They are becoming the filmmakers of tomorrow. They are the people that are becoming um, really, really well known. I mean, uh, look at, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the, of the good example. You know, you know who PewDiePie is, right? Everybody knows PewDiePie. Um, you know, he was a guy that developed, he has a huge, 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 huge following. And um, what he basically does is comment on video games, right? I mean, that, that's what he did. He, that's how he started. And he got this huge audience and then, uh, you know, people came to him and then he was sought after and agencies wanted to represent him. And he was kind of like, dudes, I make like $5 million a year and I don't have any representation. I'm like really happy. <laughs> And they're like, no, no, you need us because we can grow you and we can create bigger brands and we can connect you. You could be directing your next feature and you could be directing, you know, doing this and doing that. And the next thing you know, you know, he's being, you know, courted by all the major agencies and, and being brought in so that he can create content and, and you know, write and, and possibly direct and do all these other things. So basically when you are a writer and you're, if you've co-written with somebody that has created successful material or has created a platform that people are watching, that gives you cachet. That gives you the fact that you have, a tr you have traction, you have an audience. And people will watch for that. People will watch for you as a writer, watch for you as a director, and seek out that voice. So it's very, very compelling for all artists to use the platform to their advantage. So yes, 100%. Is there any other questions? Yeah. Since so much of, of this whole business is going to these platforms, doesn't that mean that you don't necessarily have to move to LA? And 100%. You can live you can, yes, that's true. It's true. I mean, I used to say to everybody, you have to come to L.A., you know, you have to be in L.A. And I will say there is some merit, like during pilot season, with the immediacy of everything, that once you have, like, if somebody does see an uploaded video of you, if you do see a pre-screen on somebody, and you really love them, and then the next step is that you're going to have a session, you need them there in person. So, yes, I think to a certain extent you can play that game from afar, but I do think as an actor you need to be ready always to be available in person because there will be a time where you still are going to go through some of the traditional channels in order to get the job. The difference is, is that the beginning part of it starts, it starts this way, you know, and then it, then it goes forward as opposed to like I'm here in L.A. and I got a call at 3 o'clock and then I'm going to go in for this pre-read here and this pre-read here. Casting directors are doing all their pre-reads online, you know. So... Any other questions or thoughts? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, Damon, did you want to say anything? Oh yeah, I have another question. <laughs> um, if, so if I'm getting ready to transition from, or I'm still even in the middle of my training in academia, and want to continue to work with you or work in this, to learn about the way that things are, are changing and, and how to sort of really be on top of these things, is there some way that you work with uh, students individually or independently, or how how does so? CGC I mean, work? I'm just so basically, when I I, I, talk, I, I tend, tend to talk very little about me and my company and what I do, but this is what I do. If if I work with somebody, what I'll do is I'll sit down with them and I'll say, all right, let's look at what let's look at what you got. Let's look at all the content that you have created. Let's look at your demo reel. Let's see how we can effectively clean all these materials up. Let's look at your website. And then if we haven't created content, let's talk about me. If I'm casting and I've got, you're out there in the world, what are the pockets that you would fit into? Where, you know, what types would you play? What, how could I market you? And if we don't have that material, or if you don't have that material readily available, then I would help you find it. 
So I'd help you identify where to look for that, and I'd help you get that material, and we'd sit down, and we'd edit it, and we'd make it centric to you, and then we would either shoot it for you or tell you, okay, you're ready to go. Now go collaborate with a fellow actor or go cast another actor opposite you to do this part and get this piece of content up and running. Then if you feel like from there you want to come back and do a check-in session and say, I did it, can I have your feedback? Or what do you think of this? Then I would do it that way too. I just had um, an, a couple of actors um, in New York who, after the, wor after the workshop that we did in January, they have created this um, ongoing kind of YouTube series that they've created. And it's really quirky and it's really funny. And they create a bunch of different scenarios. It's just one actress and this actor. They do it together. And um, they created a bunch of different things. And they really took the conversation, the, the labeling of the material, they, they took that very much to heart. And so they labeled all their different videos different things. And uh, one of them got like 200 views. And one of them got, I don't know, 450 views. And one of them got 3,000 views. And I was like, what did you guys do? Like, what is this? They labeled it romantic farts. Okay? Why do people want to click on romantic farts? I don't personally know, but they do. And I have watched the numbers of hits on this video go up and up and up. And I said to her, you might be onto something here, right? You have 5,000 views now <laughs> on this video. Now, what I will do now with that video is for somebody like that is I will say to them, now let's edit it because it's too long. But um, let's edit it. And now let's attach that to casting directors, to agents, with a little note. Up to 5,000 views on YouTube. Take a look great. It's like that's gold, right? And it's and so what we'll do is try and I love what they did. It was just again this video that she created because they created it together and they created it for YouTube wasn't really centered on her and she's trying to get an agent. So I said, "We need to we don't need his reaction every time you say something. We need to stay on you." So Let's cut this so we can have more airtime for you without losing the, the comedy. Let's tighten this piece up and make it centric to you and make it like a 30-second, you know, 45-second second postcard so that you can send it out. But the beauty of it is they just noodled around and they hit something that took off. And it was totally organic. They weren't doing it to try and get attention. This was just a, s they're writers, you know, they write and they come up with content and they have these ideas and this was one of their ideas. And it just happened to become real, it's really funny and it's really a, a great little piece of film. So. so, I mean, it sounds to me like you're a manager, agent, coach, <laughs> acting teacher. And I We're think kind of like, I, I, I would like, I mean, I, I'm a faci I facilitate is really what I think I would do. It, you know, one of the things, the mission of the company that to start it was, is that this, this information is just not available. You know, in the industry, the way it's set up, if you're actively casting, you do not have time to sit and talk to actors and really take the time and care to comb through their materials, to talk to them about what's effective, to explain to them why this piece works and why this one doesn't, to tell them why this is going to sabotage them if they send this in, to tell them to take this picture off this website because it's very unflattering. There's things that, you know, if you're really busy, if you're working for a producer and you're on a, on a project, you do not have the time, right? On the converse side, in academia, you don't have the time either. You've got a full curriculum, you've got papers, you've got grades, you've got assignments, you're in academia. So you don't have time to sit and do that kind of stuff. You can help them to a certain extent, but you can't help everyone. You, you can only kind of throw out the information and hope that people are going to get motivated and kind of figure out some of it along the way themselves. So I felt like there was nobody out there in the industry that was really kind of standing right in the middle of the teeter-totter, right at the fulcrum, and saying, I'm going to stay right here in the middle, and I'm going to hang in here with you and help you figure this out. So as you leave academia and you go into the industry, pass through this door 
and let me give you some more information. Well, that's why I think what you guys do is so incredible, and that's why part of the reason that we like to bring you up every year mm -hmm. is because I want to give students access to working with you and CTC and having the opportunity. Now, it's not just about getting in the door because once you get in the door, you need to deliver, right? So when you get these auditions and you get the self-tape, you need to be trained as an actor to deliver the goods. So, I mean, so yeah. it's it's the sort of the, the taking the academia and then making it real world. Right. Which well I think is. Well, the other thing that I think that um, my objective in, in all of this too is that there's a lot of times as actors you've trained in school and you've had a lot of, you've had a lot of experience in one area. Like, let's say you've, you've done a lot of combat or you've done a lot of improv or you've done, uh, you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of the classics or you've been heavily into Shakespeare. But now you're going into an industry, this is this digital industry where it's all about content and it's all about being on a video. And you really have very little on-camera experience, right? Or you have very little idea of how to create that content or what to do. Or you don't know where to look for that material because that's not the program that you took or the focus. It just wasn't what you did. So the other part of this business for us is to say, let's look at where the holes are. And let's try and help you find and connect with the people who can train you in those areas so that we can get, we can get you up to speed. Because if you're going to go in and compete against other actors that already have that part of the conversation completed and you don't really, you're not really proficient in that area, how are you going to be, you know, how are you going to be relevant? How are you going to be competitive? So um, a lot of times you'll find, you know, I'll find actors that have had a lot of classical training and, you know, they've done, they've done, you know, summers of Shakespeare and this and that, but they honestly, they have no idea how to be, you know, uh, what, what a multi-camera or a single camera comedy would, would feel like or how to get, what that would shoot, what that would feel like to shoot like, you know, to be on a shoot like that. Or they have had no commercial auditioning experience or they've had no improv experience, right? They just don't have that. So the idea is like, well, let's figure out what other kind of training as an actor you're going to need to invest in in order to get those things up to speed so that you can compete. Well, and one thing that you, you said strikes me too is that, so let's say you've been really trained in, in the classics and you've done a ton of Shakespeare. It's like, well, then part of what you're talking about is then how do you connect those skills to Game of Thrones? And how do I get to read for Game of Thrones? And how do I get myself marketed as an actor who can bring Shakespeare to life on camera? in these different genres, Well, I mean, right? there's nothing stopping you that if you rock Othello or if you, <laughs> you rock a classic, there is no stopping you from putting a piece of content up that has that. You can create as much production value. You're the curator. You're the filmmaker. You can create anything you want to create. So if you're amazing at that, if you have the most amazing Irish brogue that I would not know for one second that you were not born and raised, right? and you want to show that and show how proficient you are in that, do that. Market yourself that way. You know? And that's totally changed from you know, 20 years ago when y we just didn't have those vehicles to put those skills and to, to put a t in a one-minute you know, scene of yourself doing, doing um, Hamlet that's right. with Something a brick specific. backdrop for right. a minute of you getting nailing that piece right. and then marketing that piece in those avenues to the Game of Thrones, to the, you know, the Black Sails, whatever that star series exactly. is, you know. That kind of uh, exactly. avenue. Yeah, because it, whatever you develop is going to be relevant to what that casting director is looking for. And we'll find it because of the way you've labeled it and the way you've led us to it. Right? We're certainly not going to click on if it says demonstration. <laughs> that we're just going to be like, well, what does that mean? I don't get that at all. Did you want to ask Hi, something? Wendy. Yeah, I have a question. I, I'm Karen. I teach improvisation here. Hey. And, um, and I saw your workshop last year. I loved it. Uh, here's my challenge. I recently have um, some students here actually created a webcam series, and I play the crazy improv teacher or slash acting teacher. Yeah. And they've they filmed it, but they've yet. To, and I've had several things like that. I've also did uh, the singer on a, a film that has now been put out there, but I'm having trouble getting it. You know, getting um, it from who? From the people that have uh, produced it because they haven't put it out there yet. You know what I mean? So uh, what I'm asking is, if you don't want to just sit around playing the waiting game, would your advice be in terms of creating content to do, to grab a friend, a cell, uh, you know, another actor, a uh, camera person, and start creating the content like self-tape instead of waiting when you around? When you created that content, when mm -hmm. you were hired to, mm -hmm. s to do that content, 
did you have uh, did somebody did you have a contract or did you have some kind of negotiated conversation? Well, they're going to give it. I mean, I'm going to get it. It's just they are still in production. So I'm just asking, you know, because you know yourself, a lot of this takes a while. We were in a film. I s it's still like floating around three years. Yeah, that's y not acceptable. Yeah, I know. I mean, the the bottom line is is that actors can't be held hostage right. by material that's floating out there that they shot and that, that their property. Mm -hmm. So you have a right to get that footage okay. and you have a right to, to say this is footage of me in this project and I need it. Yeah. You know, I need this footage so that I can use it to market myself. Okay. Um, you know, I think I it's yours. It's it's your image, it's your work. It belongs, you know, y you have a right to it. Um, and I'm not sure what the SAG rules or how much mm -hmm. you could, you know, what, what your what your rights are in terms of, you know, going after something mm -hmm. like that, but I'd be pretty aggressive about that, okay. you know, and I would go into projects saying, especially for projects where you're not getting paid mm -hmm. or especially for projects where you're getting, you know, just a scale job or you're getting something where you're doing, you know, they'll buy you a meal, <laughs> you know, and you're just trying to get some film on yourself, at the very least, you're like, I'm going to do this for you, but I need my footage. And I need a contract that says I'm going to get my footage. Because, like, that's all I have when I walk away from this job. I need that. So, you know, them holding on to something like that for three years. The other drag about something like that, uh, certainly for not for you so much, because, you know, you're not going to change that much in three years, right? But if a young actor goes and does something like that, and then they still are holding on to that stuff three years later, it's not even relevant anymore. So they've lost three years of traction of being able to market themselves with film that they created that they haven't gotten access to. So it's a real, that is a real problem. You really need to advocate for yourself and, and, and ask questions. You can't be afraid to ask questions. You can't be afraid to say, I, this is what I need. You know, not in a bad way, not in an insulting way, but like, please appreciate, I'm an actor <laughs> and I'm marketing myself. And I'm only as good as the tools that I have to do that with. I need footage to do that with. I just shot three hours of footage with you. Can I come to the, you know, I'll come to the editing bay. I'll come to the, st I'll come wherever you need me to come, but I need to get a hold of that content. I need to curate it and, and put it out there for my fans, for my audience. Yeah. A minute. A minute. A, a really not more than that. Um, it's, it, it, it's, I know that seems incredibly harsh, but the truth is you can accomplish a lot in that one minute if you really get the scene to the, if you really take the material and get to the heart of the matter or get to the heart of the conflict or get to the need the reason this person is compelled to speak or what is motivating them in that moment and all the backstory, all the pain, all the pathos, all the stuff that you need is all that homework you do and you bring with you to the table, right? So that, so that you can create life very quickly in those moments if you do that. So we don't need, we don't need the, the entire epic, you know, the six hour miniseries to figure out, oh, he's a really good actor, right? We can, we can tell from the promo. We're compelled to watch. So that's really what these are. They're like, you know, it's like you're creating promos. Um, and you're giving us just a, a sampling of different pieces of, 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 you know, of your ability. So I would try not to exceed a minute. And, and, a, and a demo reel in general, I really would try and – I'm really generous. I have colleagues of mine that if, if you were to ask them – I say a minute. I have colleagues that would say 30 seconds, you know. <laughs> so, it, I mean, I have some people that are so harsh. I don't turn off a video after 10 seconds. Even if I'm not super compelled, I'm still compelled to give it another, another few just because I want, I'm already there and I'm going to give the actor the benefit of the doubt. But then again, I'm also more in a mentoring and teaching brain now than I am in that kind of 
cut and dry casting director mode that I had been in the past. So I can't speak for what I'd be if I was in the thick of a project with, you know, 45 roles to cast and t three weeks to do it in. Uh, it's a very different mindset. But I would say a demo reel, you know, two minutes, you know, two and a half minutes, something like that. You can accomplish quite a bit in that amount of time. I can work virtually. You know, we can work virtually. You don't, again, we don't need to be in the same city. Um, I, I work and coach and talk to actors. I, I, had a, I had a student in Tokyo. I had a student in Mexico. I had a student in North Carolina. I mean, I've got students all over the place. <laughs> they find me and, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a, talk about bad self-promotion, right? <laughs> um, it, my website is CTC. It stands for College to Career acting at gmail.com ctc acting at gmail.com is my email address the website is college to career acting.com we also are opening a um, for the writers that were asking this earlier we're actually opening a division of the company that's going to be called college to career arts because this conversation really does expand into the world of writing into the world of producing into the world of directing, it's all connected. You know, all of us are um, expected to be a little bit of, of all of those things. Um, and just a great example of something like that is if, for example, we um, find a piece of material for you and it comes from a play and it happens to be a monologue, right? And that's what we're going to choose. We're going to open up that monologue and create it into a two, uh, make it into a two-person scene. We're going to write in some dialogue. So all, the, all of a sudden, you are automatically being put in the position of being a writer now because you're going to collaborate with me and we're going to write out this monologue so that it becomes a two-person scene. And so that it's still going to stay on you, but it's not just going to be you talking to the camera the whole time. There's going to be a listening and a give and take, but we're going to use a piece of material that was originally written as a monologue. So you do, in a weird way, become a writer all of a sudden, right? And then you become kind of the producer because you're now producing this piece. So College to Career Arts is being formed in, in for exactly that reason. And one of the workshops that we're going to create that, I'm, that is in the works right now is creating a four-discipline over a four-week four period of time where writers, actors, directors, and marketing, social media, merge into one workshop. And how those different disciplines feed in and out of each other and influence each other and support each other. So that's what I see as the wave of the information that people need as they leave college and or academia and go into the industry. I don't even know if it's just people that are leaving academia. It may be people in the industry at large. But I certainly feel that the people who have put the time and work and money and care into an academic career certainly deserve and are the most are a well deserving population and a well poised population for this information but it's not exclusive obviously to college so if it's somebody that's out of college and needs this help or they've been kicking around since college for three years and they still are not getting traction it would probably be a good idea to ask some questions why and let somebody like our company look at it let me and my colleagues look at this and help you figure out some strategies. You know, I don't think there's one magic bullet, but I think it's, a, it's, an, it's aggregating a lot of things together to create something effective. You know, you can't cure the ills of the world in one day, but you can do it one day at a time, right? Until it, until it slowly makes a difference. So that's the mission, and that's, that's who I am. <laughs> that's the company. Um, and, you know, I encourage you if, you, if you want to, to reach out, I'd be happy to have that conversation. So, thank you.